2003 when I really started doing sculpture out of these um, elements, you know, found, manipulated materials, discarded things that were kind of garbage, and they started to really take over the compositions to the point where now they, you know, you, they're very tactile, they're very sculptural, even the, the, the things that I call paintings are really kind of coming out. come to realize now, looking back, is that I thought I was a very rational, logical, linear person and did my best work in that mode, and actually I don't. I do my best work in a more intuitive mode, um, and I think it's just a matter of how you access information, but I think I access information differently. Let me give you an example. When um, people want to come to visit us, they'll ask for directions, and I'll hand the phone to Betsy. because. Betsy can tell them, you go down the street, you turn left on Jones Street, you turn right on Smith Street, and then there's a stop sign and you're there. The way I remember how to get to my house, and I'm making this up, but it's like this, is it's a little darker and it's a little lighter, something goes by, and then there's something blue over here. I can't give anybody those directions, but that's how I store that information. And so I've learned that although there are some problems that I need to solve linearly and rationally, and I'm good at that, but my best work I do when I let go of that and solve problems in a more intuitive mode, I'm a, a big picture kind of a person. Art is this ambiguous thing. There's so many moments where you get nothing or you go and you make a photograph and you'll shoot all day and you just look and you're like, ah, you know, nothing's there and then sometimes you have a really good day and you get like a ton of stuff and you didn't even know you, you know, you were going to get anything. I think that I've never had a problem with coming up with ideas and it's almost like I have so many ideas that sometimes things get sifted out because they're not as important. I have some recent work that I've kind of moved on to casting rope text and um, there's a piece right behind me, Tender. I like to cast uh, words that are kind of, uh, have a double meaning or somehow are complicated uh, in some way, whether it's kind of a gender complication or like tender can be like how, how you feel, like tender heart, tender loin, um, a tender kind of soft parts type thing, like an emotional thing, but it, it can also be how we pay. So I think there's like an interesting kind of idea going on there. And so I've been blessed to be able to attract some really good energy. And so why would I move from here when it works, okay, it works. It, it, and and the, it's the people and the stories and the things that they have brought to me in my interaction, uh, because I used to be in suburban, suburban schools, and then I said, you know what? I'm an ambassador for Homewood and suburban schools. I need to be in my own community to, to ground my own children. The children are here, the children in the neighborhood. Oh, there's Miss Tina, you know? So there's the validity to staying and doing the hard work. That, and my parents, I'm from West Virginia, we stayed in the community. We did not, and that's not to say anything against anybody else, but you, you go to the well to get the drink of water. My drink of water is here. Am 
my father is from North Carolina and he's one of the ones that came up. He came through Chicago to Pittsburgh. He heard about the steel mill was hired. So he came here to get a job and he went to church one day and he heard my mother singing in church and from that they fell in love and that was in uh, Duquesne, PA. And so, but that's where I'm from. And getting back to the question about when did I know I was gonna be an artist, I think I was inspired by my mother cause she was a beautician. So I would see her beautify women. And also my grandfather made these quilts and I would see how he could turn these, he would turn these um, army, he would work with heavy materials like army coats and he made these, sadly the house burnt so we, I don't have any, any, um, any of them. And just seeing how they work with fabric, he worked with fabrics, my mother worked with hair and there was also this group called uh, the Sunshine Guild, they would come, it was like a group of women that would show us different things like crocheting and you know, you make those little plaster casts and you paint them. So I was always good with my hands. So I, I, I think, but I think the influence of seeing my mother, beautify women, helped. The second thing that's important what the artist has to realize that they have to have a very thick skin. Everybody's a critic. Everybody, you know. So if they're willing to live with that and keep doing what they want to do and take criticism nicely and maybe there's somebody really knows what they're talking about when they tell them, you know, something. Uh, it's not an easy thing to do to be a creative person, no matter what, whether you're an actor or a writer or a musician or a visual artist. It's, it's, because it's not like, you might be going to work every day, nine to five, but you're still dealing with people's taste. And that's was what was told to me by my first boss was, he said, really, that you could have gone to school for two years, that would have been enough college. He said, what they do for you is raise your level of taste. And I think that's really true. I feel like it's important for us to take the time to do work that we're doing just because. If we lose touch with what made us love the work in the first place, it becomes another job. And I feel like that's not the reason to get into art. I feel like overall Pittsburgh treats its artists pretty good. I feel like Pittsburgh is in the place where New York City used to be in the 80s. It has the potential to turn into the next big place for artists, and that's really exciting. I feel like I still work consistently out here, and I feel like there's a lot of support for the arts. Here in Pittsburgh, I feel like the rents are affordable right now. However, that seems to be changing. Um, gradually, it's becoming harder for, I feel, um, a early career artist to, to make a living off of their art. Um, I grew up in the suburbs, so like the draw of coming out to the city and um, still not being right downtown really drew me in, but um, since then there's, there's definitely been a lot more community involvement and, um, you know, opportunities for artists right here in the neighborhood. So when you say suburbs, where is that? Plum. Plum. Yeah, 20 minutes outside. So this, this path from Plum to Indiana to Georgia to Paris to Dormont, that's pretty complex, right? <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. like about every place you could ever, like, there's... You've covered it all where you live, so how has that influenced your work in any way? I mean, has your work been kind of like the same, or does your environment change your work? Um, I would say my work is probably, it's very, very dependent on, on my environment. Um, a lot of, you know, I can look at, I can look personally at each one of my paintings and say, oh, that one, 
that one was done in her one. That one was done in Savannah. Um.